It is a beautiful morning, isn't it? <laughs> Everyone is so disciplined. I like it. <laughs> um, good morning and welcome to Haldeberg College of Higher Education. I'm sure we are well aware why we are here this morning. It is a beautiful morning. We are in winter in the Western Cape. And by God's grace, we don't have the rain to spoil this wonderful moment. What do you say? It looks like an early morning for those who come from Hauteng, uh, other provinces, but here we we are so late for the day. Okay, we haven't introduced ourselves, have you realized? Okay. Okay, my name is Tule Du Mkugela. I'm a BA final student. I'm graduating this year. You are all invited. <laughs> And my name is found in the Bible, I'm talent for a talented man, and my surname is Moyo, and I'm a fourth year student for theology. And I believe you took my position as a president of the graduating class. Uh, well, let's save that for later. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, welcome. Um, I see we've got a, our students here today. Um, welcome. And we've got our guests. Uh, without wa uh, wasting time, um, I believe that everyone has a program. Um, do we have a program? Okay, great. So we're going to ask Dr. Vitelli to come forward, who will uh, do the welcoming and uh, prayer. We would then ask the speakers on the program to take note because we won't be coming um, in between the speakers. So we ask that you take note of your time and when um, you need to speak. Dr. Litelli, please come forward. Maybe let's start with a prayer before I do the welcome. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for this beautiful day and thank you for the privilege of life so that we are alive to experience this uh, uh, event. And thank you for your traveling message. Thank you for putting a hedge around our lives. And thank you, Lord, for this institution, the institution that is, a, that is old, 90 years, 91 years old on this campus, but 126 years from where it started. And we, are, we have this privilege of being part of this. And today we are, we are celebrating yet another achievement. And bless each one of us and bless everyone who's participating and those that are directing this program. And we thank you for hearing this prayer. We thank you, Lord, for accepting it and answering it through the name of Jesus. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, these are exciting times for Helderberg College. Um, now, if you remember last year, uh, last year, February, we were standing just after the entrance. There's a, there's a building, a small building with an inscription, Helderberg College of Higher Education. We remember we were celebrating and also launching a new name. And uh, while we were doing that, we made some statements. We said, what you see here represents what, what, what will be going on on this campus. And uh, the, the little building, the, the bricks that you see, are a foretaste of what is coming. And little did we know that we would be sitting here and celebrating and inaugurating this, uh, this, this uh, road. Look, the vision of Helderbeck is big. It's big. And uh, maybe I can as well invite you uh, for another occasion, for another event in the near future, where we will be inaugurating our men's residence. It's not there, you don't see it, because you didn't even see this occasion when we, when we inaugurated the new name. You didn't see this. But today you are experiencing it. Please visualize a big building uh, that can house 150 to 200 students in the near future. Not in a prophetic near future. Not in the future according to the book of Daniel or the book of Revelation the future as in literal future 
And uh, from there, we will look at other buildings, the theology building, we'll look at many other buildings. And um, even when we look to the past, we look in the past, we notice that there's been quite a number of developments in this area. You look at our gymnasium, you look at so many places, you look at our dormitories, uh, we have been developing this place. Uh, 91 years old, there were two buildings on this campus. But now we have quite a number of buildings, and we want to add to those buildings. And I want to take this time to welcome our guests. And um, I will mention them by name, but I know that I'm also running an era of forgetting some of our guests. If I do so, I have already received an apology from you. Please forgive me. It's not because I'm malicious. It's because I might, I'm human. I might have omitted some of, some of, the, some of our guests. Uh, I want to recognize the presence of uh, the Union President, Dr. Dave Spencer, who's the chairperson of the Council of Herabek College and also the president of our Southern African Union Conference, uh, which provides the oversight for this institution. And I also want to welcome our president, uh, the head of this institution, President uh, Vincent Ngieti, who now I, I didn't run this by you, but I, I'm going to mention it. If you are going to do things to me, I have my friends with me here. <laughs> and uh, they are going to protect me. And I think uh, Pastor Dave will protect me. This is the man, whenever he takes a trip, you know, he, serve, he serves in, the, in other committees at our higher organization. Whenever he takes that trip, he comes back with stories. And stories would be something like, I met this gentleman, I told him about Helderberg College, he has offered to donate this. And when he mentions this, this, it's a big thing. And uh, all those trips, all of them, almost all of them, he comes back with a story. He's a man who's thinking of development. I always tell him that I'm, ex I'm excited to be part of this because he he thinks development. And Dr. Njeti, please feel welcome. And uh, I know this has been your dream, and it is coming to fruition. And I know there are so many dreams, and I know, I know the, the dreams are bigger than your pocket, and the pockets, and our pockets, and our finances. But we believe that where there is a dream, oh, money has a way of following the dreams. Is that true? Yeah. Where there is a dream, money follows. Please feel welcome. Our special guest, uh, Dr. Ivan Koza, you're not a stranger in this institution, and feel, please feel welcome. Um, I, uh, Sister Wesi Koza, are you here? Uh, yes, she's here. Please feel welcome. She's our patron, and she's also the sister to uh, uh, Dr. Koza. And, uh, Allow me to be a little bit personal, and it's not in the program. My wife is in the house. <laughs> Dudu is here. Please welcome my wife in the, in the podium. It's not often that she's here. She's always traveling, and she has an itinerary. I do the Uber thing of fetching her at the airport. Please feel welcome. Um, we have our, uh, our, our counselor with us, uh, and uh, he's not a stranger in this institution, and he usually visits with us, uh, uh, Councillor Gregory Pratt. Please feel welcome, and uh, uh, we are excited to have you here, and, uh, and uh, we want you to feel welcome. This is your place. We, we serve under your, under, under your jurisdi jurisdiction. Um, we also have... Uh, Union officers, uh, I think we have uh, Pastor Trevor Kunene with us, who's an executive uh, secretary of the SAU, Southern Africa Union Conference. And we also have the, the CFO, uh, Mr. Eric Odendal, who's the CFO of our headquarter, headquarter Southern Africa Union Conference. And I, I've seen quite a number of directors from the Southern Africa Union Conference who are here to grace this occasion. I think I've seen uh, uh, Prof. Uh, Dupree here, 
Mrs. Uh, Sibul Dupree, who's a communication director, uh, Pastor Maligudu, who's the ministerial director of the Southern Africa Union Conference, and I don't think I've missed those that come from the Southern Africa Union Kathy Conference. Kathy, how do how do I do that? Kathy is the comes from the South South African Union Conference. She's an associate uh, education director, and I told you that I've already received forgiveness for this. Yeah. Uh, I'm I'm operating under grace, and we also have conference presidents, conference officers uh, who. Uh, among us, I've seen Dr. Papu with us, and I've seen Dr. Munier Duplessis, he's here, and I've seen uh, Dr. Shongwe, Paul Shongwe with us from the Trans Orange Conference. I've seen Dr. Lincoln Tival also of the Mkwazulu Natal uh, Conference, and also Pastor Amos Chete Bohali from uh, Lesotho Conference. And they, are, they also came with the, the directors. I think I've seen. Uh, uh, Pastor Bukes, he's here with us. He's the ministerial director from the uh, uh, Northern Conference of South Africa. And uh, I think I've seen also other associate uh, um, ministerial association directors. Also, the alumni of Helderbeck is here also. And please feel, feel welcome. And we also have entities here on campus, Helderbeck High School, Helderbeck Primary, and I want to believe that the principals are here with us to, to, to grace this occasion. And um, also our invited guests, please feel welcome and uh, participate. And we have our staff and students, our lecturers, and people who have been making this a success and who are part of this community. And please feel welcome, our students and our staff members. And you, the, we have about 328 students, and uh, I, I don't think I want to spend time mentioning each one of them. <laughs> and also for our, our staff members, please feel welcome, and uh, may the Lord bless you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please feel welcome, participate in this, in, this, uh, in this occasion. I want to welcome all of you in this inauguration. Thank you very much. The chief guest of the occasion, Dr. Ivan Koza, the chairperson of the Council of Halibur College of Higher Education, Dr. Spencer, the SAE officers, council members, staff, students, and visitors, ladies and gentlemen, welcome once again to this grand occasion. I'm not making a mistake coming ahead of the choir. I believe. The choir will come after the president's remarks. Maybe there is a need for a song to console after a boring speech. <laughs> Maybe. I want to say this morning, exactly one year ago, we gathered in this campus to celebrate 125 years of existence and service to the community of this college. It was a gathering intended to thank God for his guidance and blessings upon this institution over all these years and recognize the past administrators and students and staff who sacrificed and served at this institution. At that meeting, we have invited Dr. Ivan Koza to be the chief guest, and that was the first time that we met him. And uh, Dr. Koza, I believe, has expressed somewhere, and it fell in our ears, that he has never been to our church's college of higher education. And that shows his interest in Adventist education, in ensuring that our youth receive higher education. So we took that opportunity and invited him. And we never thought we will meet him again. We never thought there will be another occasion that will bring him on to our campus, but here we are, by the grace of God, for another momentous occasion. 
I want to say that in the year 2013, as a college council and administrators, we gathered and intended to make a list of projects that we need to repair, renovate at the institution. And I have that list here with me. And I very vividly remember the composition of that committee, the strategic planning committee, a combination of the council members and the college administrators. And we made a list of the needs that are there on the campus. And I want to mention a few. The annex building, which we have repaired. The ELI building, where the water used to flood in, which we have repaired. Gymnasium roof, which we have repaired. Guest room upgrade that has taken place. Library security door that has been implemented. Technology for classrooms that has been bought. Gymnasium equipment, the vehicles for the college, the advertising board, the Anderson Hall curtains, the upgrade of the boardroom kitchen, the cafeteria equipment, and uh, the list goes on. So as the list, all, the whole list that I read out up to that point was carried out in exactly the same order. And when we came to the next item, which is the roads on the campus, the main road entrance to the college, the Anderson Hall Road, the Damascus Road, the Diesel Road. When we came to that stage, I said to our administrators, that is it. That is all we could do for repairing and renovating roads requires millions of rands. And how will we raise resources for such a huge project? How will we ever get funds to fix our dilapidated roads? And we have been praying about this. And the administrators know very well that we pray for our projects. And it's as if the Lord is saying in Isaiah 51, behold, the Lord's hand is not too short that it cannot save, neither his ear so dull that it cannot hear. And the Lord answered our prayer in the form of Dr. Ivan Koza coming to this campus for the first time. And he whispered in his ear and moved his heart. And at that occasion last year, he made a pledge to donate a one million rand and no strings attached to that donation. I want to quote one more little elaboration that Ellen White writes. After Jesus was crucified, we know that the disciples were afraid of the priests and the rulers and they ran away. And Ellen White writes that when Jesus was crucified, God used some influential and famous individuals to get the body of Jesus out for burial. While the disciples feared to show themselves openly, his followers, Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus, two rich and famous and influential people, came boldly to their aid. The help of these rich and honored men was greatly needed at that time. They could do for their master what was impossible for the poor disciples to do. God uses the influential people in the society. Gospel is not just exclusively for the downtrodden. It's for everyone. And God uses everyone. The influential, the famous, the rich, the poor widow, everyone God uses. And here we are to thank Dr. Koza for responding to the whispering of the Holy Spirit in his heart and made a promise on the day. And as that promise was made as a college administration, yeah, perhaps I should, I, should, I should say this, that, you know, we work with many donors and we try and we talk to them and some make pledges, some make promises. And for some, we have to follow up. With some, we have to follow up even several times. 
And some ask, some donors ask for an agreement. Some ask for an MOU and some ask for, but how are you going to recognize this? And, and some, some even say, you supply the contractor, I will talk to the contractor. But in the case of Dr. Koza's donation, no strings were attached, no purpose was mentioned, no conditions were laid. It was simply a gift to God's institution of Christian ministry. And when we received that blessing, yesterday Dr. Papu was saying about when we pray, when God answers, we must be ready to receive the blessing because God answers in a powerful way. We received the money, gentlemen, and we sat on it for almost a year, not knowing what to do with the money. So we said, should we invest in academic program? Should we invest in the media center? Should we invest in the distance learning program? Should we invest in this and that? And we went on and on and on and on. And suddenly dawned on us, hey, there's a problem in our campus. And our students are mentioning about this in our imbizos for the last 20 years. Of course, I was not here for the last 20 years, but we know that they have been saying that we are bringing this to your attention, the Damascus Road. We said, maybe this is an occasion that we must look at that. So we've, we looked at our list, the list that we generated a couple of years ago, and then we, there we find the very next item on the list is the main road to the entrance of the college, Anderson Hall Road, Damascus Loop Road, it says. Now we are calling it a crescent. And Disa Road. We said, this is an answer. This is God's leading. And we have decided to renovate the Damascus Road. And I want to say to you, there was just a way here. There was no road. We won't believe it. Those of us who have not been here before, now there's a difference between a, a way and a road. You can find a path or a way even in a jungle, but that's not a road. So what we had here before was simply as a path. It was not a road. So we called the contractors and invited uh, several people and got quotations and we told them we are a church institution. We don't get funding from the government. We are a non-profit institution. And our mission is to offer higher education to young people with a values-based approach. And they too responded. They gave us some discounts. They waived off certain administrative costs. And to that, we topped up as a college a fund that the SAU gives us called as the SAU Capital Appropriation Fund, which we have been using for repairs here and there all these years. But this time, we said we will invest all of it in, in, this, uh, in, the, in the funds that we have, and we will renovate our roads. So with the funding that we got from Dr. Koza, we fixed basically three roads. The road from the entrance of the college to the, to the dam that you see there, okay, the whole newly renovated road, that's the first one. The second one is to renovate the old, or shall I call it the formerly Damascus Road. It will be re renamed now, called by a different name very soon. We have renovated this road. We, almost, we also want to keep the situation of our ground staff, our staff who work in the maintenance and cafeteria. You know, they live on the other side of the campus, beyond the dam, and they're referred to as our staff who live on, in overseas. And they have to go through the valley, and it's a muddy road. So we did something over there as well so that they can drive. So we fixed those three roads with the donation that we received from you, sir. And on top of it, we topped up and we did the Disa Road and then the Edison Hall Road. So we are gathered here this morning to express 
our appreciation to Dr. Ivan Koza to thank you for making it possible to have such a huge renovation project, which gave a huge facelift to this campus. And we sincerely thank you for that. May God bless you and all your endeavors and grant you success and prosperity in all that you do. And we also want to thank Sister Vizi Koza, who has been facilitating our meetings and our, and our discussion. And thank you for all your support. We want to thank God and thank each and every student and staff for putting up with the stress and strain as we were fixing the roads. And uh, by God's grace, we have a wonderful location today. And God bless you. Thank you, Dr. Injeti. That's our president speaking. You, you see, I feel like preaching, and the title of the sermon is Damascus Road. <laughs> ah. We have many choirs in the world, but as Helderberg College, we are so proud to have our own choir, which does not only appear on SABC, but it goes further even to Super Sport. So please, ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for the Helderberg, the real choir. That's how we do it at Helderbeck. We give you a teaspoon so that you remain wanting some more. Uh, it is our honor now to invite Dr. Dupree to come and give us the history and the transition to the new road. Uh, I checked the Bible overnight looking for the word road. I realized that 61 times written in the Bible. Just to our future sponsors, see the gap between where we are now into 61. <laughs> I have a brother whose name is Irvin. He was born in 1948. He's 71. And that's my brother Irvin Dupree. But we have another Irvin here today, also born in 1948 also 71 and as we look at age and we look at history and we look at what happens in this world and in this life and the 61 roads and we're not going to talk about 61 roads today but the value of history and mrs sparrow if you are here yvette uh, one of our librarians she has assisted me in doing the research in finding information uh, about our road and this campus and in one of the magazines that the, that the school had, called Hale Helderberg, and some of you will recognize and remember that the name of our uh, school song, our college song, is Hale Helderberg. Um, now, in, in Hale Helderberg, it states that the area where the road, this road, has been built, 
uh, we haven't had a road there before, as you say, a path, was previously known by the students, and I'm, I'm, I'm emphasizing the students, as Watmissen Grove, named after two lecturers, two teachers who were especially loved on this campus, a Mr. Watts and a Mr. Rasmussen. So this was Rat, uh, Ratmussen, Watmissen, <laughs> let's say that again. This was Watmissen Grove just behind us here. And around 1932, according to the Silverleaf book on campus, the first few thousand pine and eucalyptus trees were planted to replace the apricot and other fruit trees that were on this campus. And now we sit with the issue of alien growth. But if you see the pine trees around you and the eucalyptus, they were built around 1932. Going back to one of the Hale Helderberg papers, they tell us around 1946, there were only two cars on campus. So there wasn't much need for many roads. There were two cars on campus, that of the principal and that of the business manager. By 1949, three years later, it had become 11 cars. We think the teachers all got a salary increase. <laughs> 11 cars in campus and a school car and the college truck. And it's not the college truck that we see standing by the farm buildings, although the old truck, Dr. Njeti, I sometimes thought it came from 1949. Then in, in 1955, when I was two years old, a sawmill was bought, and that gives us some indication as to the origin of the path here. A sawmill was bought uh, to produce enough timber to build three duplex houses for married students. And those are the three houses down at the end of this road here. That was 1955. And, you know, minutes of, uh, where's... Mr. Pastor Kuneni, minutes are sometimes seen as boring, but the minutes of the college show us action number 1367 <laughs> of 1955 that money was set aside to build a road scraper so that this path down here could be made to the student housing. In the board minutes of 1960, the 14th of August, Mention is made of married student accommodation and a staff member, and I think the next staff meeting, Mr. Lawrence, might just come up with this designation again. A staff member was appointed to be in, on duty for farm and campus roads. That was their responsibility. Now, it's interesting when we look at a 1950 document, it gives us the names of some of the roads on campus. Now, two roads or rather one road was named here today. How well were you listening? You're on a college of Deesa. Deesa Road. Where is that? I think it's at the top. At the top going to the staff houses there. Did you notice the name of the road coming in here this morning? Some of you, many of you parked here. Anybody look at the name of the road? Protea Road. But in 1950, there's a document that gives the names of the roads of Halderberg College. McClear Road, Robinson Road, and Shankle Road, amongst others. And who were those people? President. Former presidents of Halderberg College. Now, as a former president of Halderberg College, I am not canvassing for anything. <laughs> I'm just stating history. <laughs> and for Dr. Spencer, there was also a Wilson Road. And why is the Wilson Road significant? He was a union president. And I'm not advocating anything for our union presidents today because we've got a union president and a former union president here with us. So we had roads named after uh, the leadership of this institution and the union. There was one president, if you looked in the, in the uh, admin building, there's one president whose name could not be used as a name for our roads. And there's a special prize of 1,000 Rand 
from Mr. Urendal. <laughs> for those who can give me the name of the road for somebody whose name could not be used, Okay, firstly, it shows you do not go into the admin building and study the names of the presidents, the former presidents here. One president whose name could not be used was President Tar. <laughs> because it would be difficult having a tar road on campus, <laughs> especially in 1955. <laughs> you know, it's almost like those who were at the theology banquet last night about the professor. You heard? You would be told, you need to go to the tar road. <laughs> Which tar road? There's only one tar road on campus. So sometimes, sometime later, the names of the roads would change to plants and trees. There's Protea Road, there's Diesel Road, Aram Road, and so forth. Buildings on campus as well. We had Branson Hall, named after the first division president. Uh, we have Anderson Hall, named after a pioneer missionary, Salisbury House, after an educator who was known um, in the United States and in, and in South Africa, and Fisher House for a long-serving um, dean of women, long-serving. And there are some deans that are beginning to approach being the longest-serving dean on campus in the male dorm, and I'm not advocating for Mr. Colin Lawrence today. Coming to... What was the road going down to the uh, housing for the students in what was formerly the Watmerson Grove? In 2002 at an Imbizo, where our students are able to meet with administration and raise issues, a winsome young lady called Winsome Brown from England, a theology student, got up and she made an impassioned speech to the administration to please do something about this road that is spoiling their shoes, that is spoiling the shocks on their cars. It's like a Damascus experience every time we go down this road. This Damascus road must be repaired. And the name stuck, the Damascus road. Winsome Brown is now back in England married um, <coughs> to, Winsome, to Brown to bikies. So she has now become a brown bikie. <laughs> Winsome Brown became a Winsome Brown bikey. And then after the building of what was called the Lego homes, it was built with styrofoam blocks that fitted into each other and then cement was poured into it. And some students very fondly called it Lego homes. That became known a little bit less, uh, you know, well known as the Jericho Road. And yesterday I heard that the section of the road at the bottom of this crescent is called Golgotha Road. <laughs> so Jericho Road was then uh, also uh, named at the top there. But today as we inaugurate this new road, a new tar road, it might be good for us to review the names of our roads, our other roads, in recognizing the role of our founders and significant persons in the history of the college. For example, and I'm using this opportunity while I've got this, this podium here. For example, the entrance that has been re newly um, tarred could, for example, be called the Dr. Dave Birkenstock Boulevard after the longest serving president of this institution. That's just an example. And so today, as we are here to reflect um, and not only to reflect on history, but to be part of history and to make history, we trust that you will never forget the way the Lord has led us in our past history. Amen. 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 Thank you, Dr. Tupri. This must be put on the history books so that the new students might have it as a module. Um, this is mainly for the theology students. Um, a new pastor was introduced in a place and he found a church painted black and on his first week he decided to go and buy white paint and he changed the color of the church. 
And on Sabbath morning, he found the church worshiping under a tree. They said, we want our black church. Uh, this is the resident of the area where the road passes by. We want to hear whether they want their dust road. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, Moyo. I think we, we don't want our dust back again. <laughs> it caused a lot of grief. <laughs> you can just imagine the, the dust on the windowsills, the dust of the cars, the shocks being a, a filled with dust. It wasn't a lack of experience. But anyway, a few, a few weeks ago, we, I received a, a message on social media. I just want to describe the message. I don't know if you have seen in America, especially if you are young, if you are men. And um, you see a, uh, I'm going to describe this car quickly. It's a car filled with hydraulics. So the, the owner of the car stands behind or outside of the car and he presses a button and the car does various things. I don't know if you have seen that before. So that's how we can, how a friend described Damascus Road. It's as if when you, especially when you come by that speed bump on your left there, and then you wonder, should I drive fast or should I drive slow? And when we drove fast, we experienced that one where the car went and did his dancing on this road. And um, it was a, 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 a nice time, but also a very difficult time because money just went because of having to fix things. And also when it would rain, it, was, it wasn't a nice sight. It wasn't something nice because my wife would call me while I was, whilst I'm studying. And she said, babes, um, something just happened now. What happened? Um, the car stuck um, on the, 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 on the, on, on the bend over there. <laughs> it stuck there and, and, and the wheel was in, 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 the, in the crevice there. And um, I said, okay, what should I do now? <laughs> and eventually just reversed the car and the car was brought back into the garage again. So now if we look at it in retrospect, we, we can see how how God has made this experience an experience for us to be more humbled, for us to realize that everything is not always perfect. There's worse situations that we can come from that we have seen, and we too can be participants of it and also have a different perspective of, of how things can be. And therefore, we would like to thank you, Dr. Kosa, for, for, for the, the, the impact and the, the revelation that you gave us and future, future sponsors. To, to think of something that will contribute to the well-being of someone else. And um, we are eternally grateful for that. And um, just a verse that I would like to share as the song, the song was sung in number 6, verse 24 and 26. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you the peace. Thank you very much. Amen. Thank you very much, Andre. Andre is one of my friends. Um, as you've heard, he's one of the residents um, that lives down this road. And I've got also a testimony to share. Um, I'm a parent and I have my kids at all the three schools on campus. And sometimes I would have to find my son on campus and I would then drive from the primary school to Mrs. Songwiku's home trying to find him and I would be stuck when I got to this road because it was so bad and loving my car I wouldn't take the risk of going down here and I remember one of my friends was a TSA president Andre Kittis when we would want together at one of their homes because they also live on um, on the area and he would say don't forget Tuleto will never come here because she loves her car so much, so much, and um, there is no way that she's going to roll her car um, on the road. So I'm very grateful, and it's it's a beautiful testimony that I also had an opportunity to reflect on, because you know you think that the obstacles in your in your way, there is no way to overcome them, and then you find someone that says this can be fixed. So Dr. Koze, we are very grateful for the work that you have done for us. Um, next, we are going to call um, Pastor Malikudu to come and um, pray for, um, of dedication of the road. And immediately after that, we will call upon Dr. Spencer. And once uh, after Dr. Sp uh, Spencer's prayer, we would ask that everybody stand and walk down towards the road. Just be careful, um, walk slowly and um, we will then 
uh, do the cutting of the ribbon by Dr. Ivan Koza. Thank you. For the prayer of dedication, I will humbly ask that we all stand as we and we bow our heads for prayer. Let us pray. Dearest Father in heaven, we stand to lift up our heads, our hands, and our hearts in total praise. We give you honor and glory for who you are. We start this, our prayer to you, by dedicating ourselves to you. For all we have and all we are come from your hands. We thank you for your grace that is always sufficient for us, for your mercies that are renewed every morning. Great is your faithfulness. We dedicate this road, the Dr. Ivan Koza Crescent, to the mission of this, your college. And we pray that you may bless it and keep it, that it may contribute to the salvation of many a soul. We pray, dear Father, thus, that those who trod on it and those who use it may use it for your glory and honor. May all who walk on this road walk to their freedom. May their names be written in the books of life. May it be that as you bless all of us, that you may not forget to bless your servant, Dr. Koza, and his family. Lift up your countenance upon him and give him grace. Give him peace of mind that surpasses all understanding. For we pray all this in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Before you sit down, we actually want to invite the council members to please come. And uh, Dr. Causa, if he could come and stand next to me, please. We want to have a special prayer for our donor. And I ask the council members to also come and stand near the front here so that we can have the special prayer. Thank you. Let us remain standing and let us pray together. Our Almighty Father in Heaven, we thank you so much for this special day of celebration when we can inaugurate a new road, a road which has made a big difference in everyone here at the College's lives. And we thank you, Lord, for the generosity of Dr. Koza. We pray, Lord, that you will bless him abundantly. We know, Lord, that you have told us to be generous with one another. Whether we are rich or whether we are poor, we should always consider those around us. And we, we thank you, Lord, for the good heart of Dr. Causa in this generous contribution towards the college. I pray, Lord, that you will bless him, bless his family, and may you continue to use him to further the good purposes in, of your will wherever he goes. Lord, thank you that you have blessed us through his gift, and may you continue to bless him and the others with whom he comes in contact. Thank you once again, Lord, for your generosity towards us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you very much. And it is now with honor to call upon Dr. Ivan Koze to give us some remarks and... Um, a special announcement from Supersport. They've asked that everyone that gathered here this morning um, at the time when we're cutting the ribbon, please pay attention to the camera. So put those smiles. You'll be on TV. <laughs> Dr. Evan Koza will welcome you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, President uh, Dr. Jetty, uh, Dr. Spencer, Dr. Litsedi, 
I think the protocol has been observed. Uh, I just want to have one regret to register. That when I made a donation last year, I never told my family. <laughs> and that is why I did not invite them except to so see Swayze who was here. Because uh, I'm a shy person by nature. And uh, when I make a gesture, I want to keep it secret. And now I'm embarrassed because when I go back, <laughs> I'm going to make some explanation. In fact, uh, three days ago, when I was doing my booking, a friend of ours who was a stakeholder manager for Super Sport got to hear that uh, I'm invited to Helderberg in Somerset. He happens to be a captainian. He said, but how dare you not tell us that there's something happening in Cape Town? And I said, but no, it's just an invitation. I don't know what is it all about. He said, I'm coming. I'm coming with my camera. Uh, it's my colleague, Mr. Kreme Prems, uh, who's working for Supersport, but more importantly, the stakeholder manager of uh, MultiChoice. And again, I felt, you know, a bit uh, un uncomfortable because uh, I've got a family of millions of people in this country who will feel embarrassed that I did not, you know, share with them this most important experience of my life to be honored by my church. Uh, I said last time when I was here, one of the things that I very much, which is a challenge that you know I have in dealing with a lot of problems in my environment. Now, my industry is responsible for the happiness index of this country, but also is, in, is responsible for generating debate, discussions. Uh, this weekend, you know, on Sunday, we'll be doing the awards. Those that were watching TV last weekend about the results, about who's going to win the league, who's going to be relegated. Every household in this country was talking, and my name was featuring somewhere. <laughs> some blaming me, some, you know, congratulating me. But, you know, what is important is what I learned from this church. Uh, and that uh, uh, each time I have that kind of a situation that is challenging to me, because I don't have answers. I will just uh, revert and resort to Hebrew chapter 11, verse 6, uh, to make sure that my faith is strengthened all the time, because I don't have the answers. I'm not a visionary, I'm not psychic. I can't have answers on situations that are new to me at all times. But faith is the only thing that carries me through all the time, to make sure that whatever I do, I stick to that faith. But one other challenge that you know uh, I came across was when I was reading the Bible, because I always make time you know, to read the Bible. Because each time I read a chapter or a verse, I get a new experience, a new inspiration in my life that I've not yet started. I still have to learn more, because there's so much to learn out of Scripture that is encouraging. Now, I discovered that, you know, uh, I know I'm in a very awkward place here because I might misquote myself. But bear with me, because I'm not at your level. <laughs> uh, I just discovered that, you know, uh, when you read the Bible, you know, uh, it happens to be, if I'm right, if I'm wrong, keep it yourself. <laughs> that there happen to be two righteous people in the Bible. And uh, one of them was Noah, and the other one was Moses. Now... Noah, obviously, we all know that, you know, he did what he did because of the faith he had. It's like when you are asked to build a boat uh, in Zimbabwe or in Zambia, when there's no sea, and everybody will think you're not normal. <laughs> because the country is landlocked, there's no sea. But, you know, Noah happened to build that road, uh, that boat. Uh, because of the faith he had on the message and instruction that he received. Everybody passing by was saying, but are you normal? Are you nuts? What are you doing? But when the moment came, it was a transformative event in the history of mankind at that particular time. Because God has made a determination to say, man, I've been making my people to live longer. 
But it's time now I must cut their ears because there's something not right with these people. I'm going to destroy all the mankind or humankind and start afresh. And instructed you know, Noah to do the right thing. To choose, you know, the few people that he thought are going to start a new life. Uh, obviously, his family was likely to be part of that, you know, three, uh, three sons that was asked you know, to be in the boat. And all animals uh, that were unclean, one of each, whatever it means, uh, Dr. Spencer. And the seven pairs of the good ones uh, into that boat. And you know that thereafter we were told that, you know, uh, we we're not going to live like Adam 130 years. We'll live 120 years. But today they say it's three scores plus ten. I'm at that point now in my life. <laughs> uh, and you know, when you live in the township, they say that's a bonus. Uh, you're on the lap of honor. Uh, some of us call it sunshine years. So it was very important that, you know, it made me understand that, you know, uh, this righteous, you know, Noah, it happened after everything has happened, you know, in the experience of the flood and whatever. He started a new life. But he found himself, you know, in the vineyard and something happened. And, uh, you know, he lost, you know, his righteousness. But it says to me also what I got educated to say, it does not necessarily mean when you are righteous you can be a leader. That's the lesson I got out of that experience when I let him to read about the experience of Noah. But one interesting figure is Moses. Uh, Moses is one that is stood the test of time. And uh, he remains one of the few or in, only righteous person. I'm not sure. It's for the people here to discuss this <laughs> in my absence. I don't want you know, to be found to be on the wrong side. Like football, get a lot of people commenting about the game. They all become coaches, technical directors. <laughs> and in our language, they have new wing lava we are better. Now. <laughs> and if I'm a swim also in the script, that's fine, you know. It's my turn also to be a swim. <laughs> <laughs> but what I learned out of that was that, you know, what it means to be a balanced leader. What it means to live outside the influence of power when you're a leader. That's what I learned out of reading, you know, uh, the test of character that, you know, Moses had to go through throughout his life and the sacrifices that he has made to make sure that the faith he had and the command he received that he must do everything possible to liberate the children of Israel out of Egypt and to a point whereby he never saw the promised land. But he, was, he didn't grumble about it because his job was done. Ladies and gentlemen, it is with great pleasure, uh, humility, that I stand here today. The significance, enormity, and responsibility of this naming being done once I'm alive is not lost to me. When I was here last year, I spoke about the importance of institutions in a society. I particularly pointed out the even more special place of institution of learning, especially that of Heidelberg College. I said a quote, there's something special about Heidelberg College. This special characteristic is in its foundation and continued pursuit of Christian education and values. Heidelberg College is one of the more than 100 institutions of higher education throughout the world, founded and supported by the Seventh-day Adventist Church. There is a lot special about being Christian especially being an Adventist cross court. I've been privileged to have had the work that I didn't perform in my sphere of influence to be recognized. I'm a humble recipient of national awards from President Mandela, President Mbegi, and President Zuma in relation to my contribution to our nation through my leadership in football. When I go across the length and breadth of our beautiful country, People still talk about the South Africa 2010 FIFA World Cup as if it only happened a few days before. That, ladies and gentlemen, reminds me always of what we are able to achieve when we get our energies working in concert. I'm an honorary colonel of the South African Army. It is an honor and responsibility I cherish, so I'm a great believer in the important role of institutions in the upkeep and growth of a strong 
a successful nation. I have been recognized and honored by other institutions here at home and abroad. None of my other recognitions come close to my heart than this honor today. Amen. Today I have been honored by a place and the people that formed me. It was as a Seventh-day Adventist that I grew up and my value system was harnessed. It is as an Adventist that I grew up to understand service and selflessness. When I was here last year, I completed my address with a quotation from the book of John, chapter 4, verse 7 to 21. Today I would like to repeat verse 19 to 21. We love because he first loved us. Whoever claims to love God, yet hates a brother or sister, is a liar. Whoever does not love their brother and sister, whom they have seen, cannot love God, whom they have not seen. And he has given us this command, anyone who loves God must also love their brother and sister. My message today comes from the great book of Leviticus, the extraordinary leadership of Moses, reminds us that nations and institutions of the world will from time to time be blessed with greatness. The problem they would face thereafter will be that of continuity. That is a problem that is faced by every nation, every organization, community and family. And there is a time it comes that in the personal importance of institutions, the day Moses descended the mountain with the second tablets was immortalized by Aaron. The wisdom of the prophet was preserved for eternal reference and relevance by the high priest. He teaches us that the way to perpetuate a transformative event is by turning it into a ritual. Our nation is referred to as a miracle nation because of Nelson Mandela. Our leadership challenge was still and still is the routinization of his charisma. A week old national elections results show that the only parties that grew are the one that to the far left and the other to the far right. Being an institution of higher learning puts us at the right place to closely examine the causes of this polarity and possible solutions. Our world revered constitution cannot be the only place where our nation is free, united as equal in the opportunity. Just like talking Christian does not make you a Christian. The ideals in the Constitution do not make us a democracy until it is living in the routine we live. Turning ideals into codes of the actions that shape habits of the heart is what we should do and talk about. Ladies and gentlemen, we do not only have a leadership challenge, it is not only the highest priest Aaron that will seek to perpetuate the Prophet Moses' transformative event. There is a need to define and guide fellowship. Unless the followers see a clear path they take, solace and resort to resentment, hate and peer grudges, which is turning us, the nation of Nelson Mandela, into one of the most violent and intolerant nations in almost all spheres of our lives. Community riots, domestic violence, armed robberies and labor unrest. Ladies and gentlemen, we have to accept that it is our responsibility. It is a common trait of failing nations organizations, communities, and individuals to shake responsibility. We only change and update those that we blame, but the sense of victimhood re remains. We can't blame the politicians, the media, the system, and we all else fail, we blame God. The first humans lost paradise when they sought to hide from responsibility. We only regain it if we accept our responsibility. We are reminded by Moses in the book of Deuteronomy not to blame God when things go wrong. Do not believe that God is there to save us. We are here to save him and through him to humanity. God is straight. It is we who are complex and self-deceiving. God is not there to relieve us of responsibility. It is God that is calling us to, to responsibility. Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you for the honor. I promise once more 
that the significance, enormity, and responsibility of this naming of the street, which is a pathway to community and communication, is not lost to me. Streets are facilitators towards community and their participation in ecosystems. We use streets to access home, work, and play. All the pillars of an economy have a street named after you, after you recognize one as a junction and area of human interaction. To have one name after you in an institution of higher learning means a recognition as a facilitator of enlightenment. To have one name after you at Heribert College of Higher Education, learning, a Seventh-day Adventist institution of higher learning, hits straight in my heart. You have strengthened me and my faith. I'll remember that I'm here not to be served, but to serve. End course. Uh, I think it's very important before I cut this ribbon that I come from Alexander Township, which is a dusty road. It's one of the few townships in the country where there was a free uh, lease or right hold ownership in the country from 1912. I want to dedicate this to our father, David Koza, who started from the dusty road of Alexander to introduce us into this great you know, church of the Adventists. That today I find myself with my sister here, making sure that this legacy is sustained. Yeah. In making sure that we serve and we are not being served. Mm -hmm. And we found there's a weakness in the country that wherever we go to functions, whatever magnitude, whatever stature, instead of being a host, you want to be a guest in your own function. And our father taught us that you cannot be a guest in your own function. Because your job is all the time to, to serve people. I only hope in this case, I want to thank everybody in the leadership of the church to make it possible that, you know, I can recognize our father's uh, beginning of this road long before we were born, that it becomes a reality today that we are part of this institution. And I hope that you ask for your prayers that you must not fail, because it's not easy sometimes to face challenges of this world. That is this most important naming of this street, where I make sure generations after me in the family continue with the good work of making to understand what it means to be selfless, what it means to be self. Once again, thank you very much for the honor. Yeah. I don't know whether it's the first step to the moon. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm only worried about one thing. Uh, they told me that you know there was a gentleman who was a Muslim. Uh, that gentleman uh, used to be a hobo. He used to collect bottles and sell every day. And he makes 20, 40 rands. Uh, in that 40 rands he shared with his friends who could not make money on that day. Or so another Muslim friend of his, that every day he goes to the mosque to go and pray five times for his business to flourish. But when he went to heaven, the businessman went to the right, and the great you know, angel there, Gabriel, says, No, my brother, I don't belong to the right, go to the left. He says, But I've been praying five times a day. How can I go to the left? When the hobo came, he went to the left. He said, no, you don't belong to the left. You belong to the right. Because each time you make money every day, we're sharing with your brothers. Therefore, you belong to go to the right. Ah. Mm. So then I hope that by crossing this road, I won't be turned back when I get <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. My last speech, <laughs> I went to Israel the other day. Now there's a very great mosque here on Mount Olive. You see there's a mosque. Below the mosque, 
there's a big graveyard there. I'm told that you know, people that are sleeping there uh, are sleeping there with the hope that when Jesus Christ comes back again, uh, they'll rise first. <laughs> but Adventists say that those that they die in Christ, they'll rise first. So I don't know if my name is going to be there. <laughs> so as I pull that, I hope my name is going to be there. Kuwe ngungulu 
Lasse. Nana, oh, no, the goo, who come back and cock us, who goes and never land a lion, Babu Ganago. Oh, Shah. Since he's here with Tanda Cosa, since he's here with Tanda Cosa, since he's here with Tanda Cosa, Babu Ganago. Brothers and sisters, I take this uh, honor to declare the Dr. Ivan Kozakrisa that the current and future generation will benefit in use of this crescent. God bless. Dr. Corsa, distinguished guest, it's my uh, privilege this morning on behalf of Helderberg College and the South African Union Conference to honor you with this flag for what you've done for this college, what you've been for this college. Allow me to read what the flag says. It reads as follows, it says, the staff and students of Helderberg College of Higher Education honor Dr. Urban Causa with deep gratitude for his generous contribution towards the road upgrade inaugurated as the Dr. Irvin Causa Crescent on 17 May 2019. Oh, yeah. I'd like to present this to you, sir. Football. When the sun down on my coffee, nothing to feed me. A 204 live in the PSN Awards, I'll be addressing the whole nation. I'll make sure that before I award any award to anybody, I'll raise this. Hey,